Hey guys, I'm going to make a, a yellow video right now, uh, and that's that the video is going to be yellow on my face, sorry. A little yellow light, and I'm outside. Um, Ron Paul, Republican Senator Ron Paul, has put forth a, uh, an act called the Federal Reserve Transparency Act to audit the Federal Reserve. Um, this is H.R. 459, and this is set to be voted on in July. Now, he's got a lot of backing, a lot of senators, but so far there are 20 or so people in the House that are, that are for it. There's a lot of people that haven't really signed on to this yet. I've got to explain. Now, this might be redundant information, um, but I want to talk about the Federal Reserve. I don't know if you know who the Federal Reserve is. The Federal Reserve is a private company that prints money and they sell it to the U.S. government. And it's been going since 1913. It was basically established by J.D. Rockefeller and some of his friends. Uh, there's a Roth, the Rothschild family, the Carnegie family, I believe the DuPont family was involved. Um, but J.D. Rockefeller was like, a, in the late 1800s, he formed this company called Standard Oil, and it was like the first monopoly. It was the, really the first oil company ever made. And uh, he basically became the richest man in the world faster than anyone else had ever become. I think he was the first billionaire. And uh, he formed Standard Oil. And then he, he formed monopoly. And basically, when you hear about antitrust laws, that was because the government had to split up his company, Standard Oil. And they split it up into what they called Standard Oil Trust. And actually, I think he, he turned it into a Standard Oil Trust, and then they had to split up his trust. And they had to create, when you hear antitrust laws, that's basically uh, anti monopoly laws. Anyway, J.D. Rockefeller was a money man, and he was a big oil guy, and all, he wanted to be rich. And he became super rich, and he didn't care. He seemed to not really care who he hurt along the way. So the government came along and broke up his oil company and they created like Exxon and Shell and uh, some other oil companies like, you know, a lot of these oil companies that you hear of today were, were created in, in like the late 1800s when Standard Oil got broken up. Well then, years go by, 1913 comes around and J.D. Rockefeller and his friends decide they want to start a new monopoly. So they come together and they form what was called the Federal Reserve. And they got the American government, Woodrow Wilson, to sign this into law, uh, what was called the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. And it basically created a private company and gave this private company the ability to print the money for the U.S. government so the government didn't have to do it anymore. They had a lot of influence and they paid a lot of people off to get that put into action. And the crazy thing about the way our, our, we work is that one guy can pass one law and it can stay in effect for 80 years, even if it's not a good law. Like, they outlawed hemp, and uh, that's been outlawed for, like, almost 80 years, you know? It's, like, right around the same time these people started taking, like, control of the media um, and the money and the oil. And they've had control for about 100 years. It's funny that, that uh, it's almost been exactly 100 years now. I guess the Federal Reserve has like a 100-year limit, so they want to audit this thing before the 100 years is up, uh, before it's like kind of, I don't know if it would be scot-free or home-free or something, but they want to put the audit out. Like, and it's basically going to be voted on in July. Federal Reserve goes around, goes around, you know, let's have the gold standard eventually, and like they think it was in the 70s or something, they, they went up the gold standard of the money, so the money used to be backed by how much gold we had in our treasury, and now it's not, now it's, um, it's, what's called a fiat currency, and what that means is that it's it's basically, they can print whatever they want. Um, it's not based on anything, it's based, fiat means trust, I believe, it's based on trust, or it's based on faith, fiat means faith, faith. So it's a faith-based currency now, it's not a gold-based currency. And um, it literally gives them the ability to print as much money as they want. This is what the Nazis did during World War II, that set them into superinflation and destroyed their economy. And that's kind of what's been happening now. I mean, they printed trillions. They, they, they printed hundreds of billions, if not trillions, 
recently to bail out the banks and things all over the world. Uh, it goes way beyond the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is basically the American branch of this system. There's the International Monetary Fund, there's the Central Bank of Central Banks, the, the World Bank, the uh, Bank of International Settlements, which I think is the top, is the Bank of International Settlements. Uh, but they're really owned by the same people. I mean, David Rockefeller is involved, Evelyn de Rothschild, which I think is worth $450 trillion, uh, somewhere about. But basically, they, they own all the money in the world. And they divvy it out however they want. They they set the interest rates to whatever they want, whenever they want, so that they can charge. They can they can just manipulate economies. And it's like, you know, four thousand people involved in this, or four hundred, or however many. When you go to the top, I mean, there's going to be like, you know, a group of dudes or a group of people. And it's like a it's like a boys' club. Like they go to this place called the Bohemian Grove in San Francisco, and they have like these crazy cult parties, and they have like you know male strippers come, and it's like these old guys like with their money and like all the power, they bring all the powerful people up there. They have this group called the Bilderberg Group where they, they meet I think every year or how whenever they want and they basically decide where the money's gonna go, who's gonna starve, who's gonna eat, who's gonna live, who's gonna die, who's gonna get bopped next. You know, they talk about it all, they bring the big politicians in, they, they suggest what they think the politicians should do. And you know, that suggests may come with a monetary donation. It's very, very secretive. And people, the politicians are paid to keep it secret. A lot of them are. And so that's why you don't really hear about this stuff because the politicians are paid, like you just don't hear about it in the, in, on ABC News, at least as far as I know. It's, it's not a common, you know, because the people that own ABC News are paid very well or they are the people that own, you know, ExxonMobil, it's like sometimes it's the same guy. You look at these corporation structures and they like all lead to like one mega corporation. I'm telling you, the Bank of International Settlements basically owns every all these corporations, not everything obviously, but it owns all the money, so it may as well. Finally, Ron Paul has got enough people together, you know, with the internet and all this information to audit the Federal Reserve, which basically means we're going to take their books and we're going to force them to show us what they've done exactly, dating back to whatever. And they're like, you know, don't, they don't want this to happen. First thing is they don't want people to hear about it because they figure if, if there's not enough support behind it, that they'll be able to pay off the politicians to not put it through. But if there's enough voices calling the congressman, like we're literally going to have to call these people that don't sign on. We're going to find out who has not signed on to auditing the Federal Reserve, and we're going to call them. And we're going to call them a lot every day because you may or may not realize it, but if a congressman gets a lot of phone calls, it's out of the ordinary. They don't normally get a lot of phone calls. So we're going to hassle these people, a lot of us, a lot. And we're going to force them to listen. And we're going to force them to audit the Federal Reserve because it needs to happen. And that's going to happen in the next couple months. We're going to, I'm going to be doing streaming video shows. We're putting together streaming video shows. So I'm going to be online a lot in the next coming months. Uh, 12 hours a day, 10 hours a day. It's going to, we're going to be working in shifts. But I'm moving out to Connecticut. I'm moving in with Bill. We're starting up mines. And we are running a stream. We're going to be running a stream on Stick'em for now, I think, because it's a, it's a reliable website. We're going to be talking about important issues like the Federal Reserve, like the Bohemian Grove, we're going to be naming names. I want to I want to get as much information as possible about who these people are, where they live, what they do, what, where they are right now, what they're doing. I want to get David Rockefeller on a live stream and listen to him explain. Listen to him, you know. I've got a few documentaries that I've watched. I've been really watching a lot of documentaries the last week or so, and um, I'll let you know. I wrote them down because I didn't want to have to make you wait while. Uh, well, I tried to remember what they were, but in the order that I watched them, the first thing I watched was Invisible Empire. And this is basically, uh, my friend Charles pointed me at this, uh, with Exposing the Truth, which is a great Facebook group. Um, if you want to go to Facebook, forward slash Exposing the Truth, um, and like them on Facebook, I'm part of the admin structure up there, and we, we have a lot of great, really important news and information that you may or may not hear. Uh, but I, I'd love for you to come join and listen. And uh, send us some of your ideas. Anything you can find, you know, post it on the page. But the Invisible Empire is uh, a really great documentary about the basically the Bilderbergs, about the people at the top. It's it's what you would think. These these 
the people you don't see that are causing chaos. Chaos is not, I mean, obviously chaos is natural, but one group of people doing well and one group of people suffering horribly is not natural. That's not homeostasis. Nature, obviously there's going to be winners and losers. There's going to be a healthy group and there's going to be a, a group that gets killed and eaten. But if you see the lions, like, the lions don't ostracize other lions and, like, force a group of lions to suffer. They, you know, they'll, they'll kill and eat, but, like, I mean, there's always going to be conflict, but it's not natural that, that some places in the world are, are, dele are relegated to third world. We're one world. The Invisible Empire is a great documentary. Check it out. It's on YouTube. I'm going to post links to all these documentaries below. The second one I watched was, uh, oh, the second one I watched was called 9-11 uh, Explosive Evidence. This is my notes. Um, this was pretty interesting. I worked at Ground Zero. You may or may not know that. And, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty interesting. I was in New York. I moved to New York September 6th. 2001, and I didn't have a job yet on September 11th. I was still looking for work, and, and I got a call from my friend at like 9.30 in the morning. And he's like, dude, terrorists just attacked the World Trade Center. I was like, what the fuck? I, I didn't have TV. Uh, we didn't have a cable set up or anything, so I couldn't watch anything. So I was, ended up listening to Howard Stern all day, and they were talking about it. And uh, it was pretty fucking wacky, and I thought, Jesus Christ, these Muslim extremists hijacked airplanes, flew them into the World Trade Center, and apparently Osama bin Laden was behind it. And I was like, we, we're, we gotta go to war. And then eventually I got to watch all the, the video of like George Bush reacting, and like I was all about the war, man. I was all about it. And I ended up temping at Ground Zero, getting a job with Amec, one of the construction companies doing restoration, one of three, Bovis was another one, um, through this temp agency. And I worked there for 11 bucks an hour, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., 12 hour shifts, no break, except I worked with a cop. I was like basically a security guy, and the cop would be like, hey man, if you're tired, go to sleep. So I was like, sleep, thank God. But 12-hour uh, shifts, we would just sit there, and it was like, the red cross was there. You know, they put up this huge red cross tent. It was just amazing. The smell, I actually still have my gas mask, my air filter from there, and, and if you put it on and smell it, it smells like ground zero. So if you ever want to know what ground zero smells like, let me know, and I'll let you smell the air filter. It's got the particles in it. And I guarantee if you check out this these particles, there's going to be fucking nanothermite in it. 9-11 Explosive Evidence is a documentary uh, basically by got together by, I think, uh, the parents of some victims that were just not satisfied with the official story, which is that the planes came, crashed into it, there was fire in the building, and the, and the jet fuel burned the steel so hot that the, the buildings came crashing down. I believe that. I, d I believe that until about five days ago when I watched this documentary because it is like over a hundred engineers and architects saying, no, that's not what happened. Buildings don't fall in free fall when they get too hot and buckle. Then, in the middle of the documentary, you start seeing video of people from that day saying, there was an explo a huge explosion. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, this is big. And there's all these people like, yeah, the explosion, there was explosions from inside the building. And they're like, there was like this bang, 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 pop, 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 pop explosions, and then the building fell in free fall. Buildings don't fall in free fall unless you remove the structure. The buildings were blown up. There were so many people talking about explosions that day on video. It's all there, like on the news, people were talking about explosions. So when the National Institute of Science and Technology, which was referred to as NIST, N-I-S-T, went and did their 9-11 examination. They ruled out any explosives, and when they asked to do research on it, they said, no, there's not really any evidence of it, so we're not going to look for evidence of it. That was their argument. And then they basically case closed it. And it's like, well, you know, obviously that's not scientific. This is the uh, Nas standards, N National Institute of Standards and Technology, I think, S-T. Uh, I'm sorry if I said science and technology, standards and, te standards and technology, I think. They didn't do a, a thorough investigation because they were funded by the government. And this is, I have a fear that some people involved in the CIA uh, or in the or other parts of the government planted bombs in the World Trade Centers. Building 7 literally was dem demolished. And I remember hearing a guy say, they told me to pull it, we decided we had to pull it. If you look that up on YouTube, 
pull it, pull it, pull it. Anyway, all these people talking about all the explosions that went off in the tower before the tower came coming down totally sells me on, on the knowledge that there were bombs planted in there before the planes hit. It could have been terrorists that planted the bombs, but there were bombs that removed the structure, and they're posing, postulating that it was nanothermite bombs because they find nanothermite in the dust, which is this high explosive, like a military great explosive. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, you can't really call it indisputable evidence, but it's so much uh, professional testimony about the way the building fell, the stuff that they find in the dust around the explosion site. Uh, they, as soon as the buildings came down, they they shipped off all the steel to China. Like they didn't they didn't analyze it in a lab. They just got rid of it as fast as they could, and they melted it down in China. Uh, the, you see the lava pouring out of the side of the building after the plane hits, and people said that, that was melting aluminum. Aluminum melts silver. That that's they postulate that's melting iron. Iron doesn't melt at 700 degrees Fahrenheit with jet fuel burns at it. Melts at like 15 or 2,000. So you need some sort of high hot explosive to melt steel. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel. Office fires don't melt steel. I mean, obviously, there's always... Anything's possible, right? But there's way too much evidence that says that these buildings were brought down in a controlled demolition. 9-11 explosive evidence. Very cut and dry. It's just engineer after engineer after engineer saying it. And then there's psychologists talking about how people don't want to hear information that changes their belief there's like the, the end of the thing is talking about how people like don't want to listen to it and how like he, getting your worldview changed and thinking like your government doesn't have the best interest for you necessarily is like can fuck people up so they don't want to hear it they just want to it's impossible to believe but it's like sometimes the truth hurts but a lie is going to hurt forever and truth just hurts for a minute and then we can get back on track and do the right thing that was a great documentary, so just watching that. Then I got into this guy who did these three, and I haven't seen the third one yet, but there's this one called Esoteric Agenda. And actually, Bill, I believe, is interviewing the director soon, so maybe I can get you guys some video of this. Esoteric Agenda is basically another more comprehensive video about the power structure that you don't see uh, and their agenda. Um, great video. And then it starts to lead into a little bit more of a spiritual, scientific, pseudo-scientific realm, whatever you want to call it, but basically the realm of uh, kinematics, which is sound influencing shape. And if you've ever seen this video on, uh, on YouTube where they put rice on a vibrating platform and they, they change the frequency slowly of the platform, it vibrates, and as the frequency rises, the rice like breaks into a shape. Those are called kinematics, the theory that sound affects shape. I believe it's theory, it could be a scientific fact, as far as I know. So the second documentary is called Chimatica. It's basically about the way that what we say and what's said to us influences the shape we make, the things we do, what we are. Uh, the sound, you know, there's no faking it. And it's a brilliantly done document. I've, I've watched it three times and I've fallen asleep all three times. Uh, it's just such a pe it's just uh, it's an amazing I'm gonna watch it again uh, and then uh, the third one's called Ungrip but uh, Kinetica is a fucking amazing it, it really I mean it simply put talks about like all like back to like you know Jesus talks about like all the myths from like the Mayans from like the stars who, how they worship what where the information's been held kept and held and, oh, excuse me excuse me I'm in Austin bright city nice Anyway, back to my original point, which is the Federal Reserve. I'm really looking forward to talking to you on Stick'em, on his live stream. We're going to get on. We're going to have some great discussion. You can come in and text. You can throw up your video camera. Um, we're going to record it. We're going to cut it into YouTube videos. And we're going to make a living out of this. So I'm looking forward to working with you, man. And make a video response to this because the more people that are actively talking about this the better we are at uh, spreading the message um, do, do a little bit of research on this Federal Reserve Transparency Act and make a video response or make a video and add as a response to this video I'll be happy to listen to it obviously I'll be 
delighted to hear you and see you. But um, then maybe your subscribers will have something to say about it, and then they can make a video about it and reverberate outward. Um, if you've never made a video before, it's really easy. If you have any kind of webcam lying around the house, throw it on, hit record, talk, upload the video, cross your fingers, just relax, breathe out, I'm here with you, it's easy, I've done it, if a lot of people have done it, you'll feel better about yourself once you say it. It doesn't even have to be about the Federal Reserve, just make a video, you know, get your thoughts, get out, words out. Um, if you don't have a video camera, you can go to the store and spend 30 bucks on one and get a really nice quality video camera. The microphone's 10 bucks, but if you really want you know, like an $80 video camera, webcam with an integrated microphone, get a Logitech, uh, C600 is the one I use. I actually have a flip cam that I'm recording on right now. It's 100 bucks, but it's a fucking amazing HD cam. Uh, get a camera, make a video. I'll see you soon.